it's really good when you stroke like that. Just give it a couple more like that. Yeah, that's good. It's really nice textures. Oh, hi there. We're BMG, and we're here today to take you on our art journey of what we do, how we do it, and why we do it. <laughs> we can't beat that. <laughs> Oh, nailed it, that's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. sort of like a two-piece art gang, I guess. And we're sort of best friends first and artists second. And we paint together, we've known each other since we met in detention, when we were at intermediate school. And we were bad kids and we were contagious. And it was I wasn't. I was, a, I was a really well behaved kid hey, for a while and then I guess I started to learn He's how saying much. that in case his mum watches this. <laughs> the evolution of how we paint is, is be, it's been just driven by the environment like yeah. we started small when we got big out of necessity like we started doing little stencils or someone would spray and wipe it off a thing and then we'd do a sticker and someone would scrape it and we'd, Got to the point where we were doing our characters as posters, you know, so we'd sit at home, we'd draw it up, and then we'd lack guard at three in the morning, sneaky, sneaky, wheat paste it up, and the next day I was gone. And it was like, fuck, we just spent like six hours, you know, froze our asses off in Wellington winter to do these things. So we're like, oh, how can we make things last? And that's sort of when we got bigger. And that's when we and found the ladder. Found the ladder, yeah. And then we just started going sort of above where people could reach. For a good two or three years there, we could honestly say that we didn't paint over anyone else's work. Because at that time, no one was going above in Wellington. It's quite small scale work, and everyone was painting in that area, and they're painting over each other and tagging, and it was sort of like cycling spots. And we were going, well, why has no one done that? And why has no one you know, gone that two or three metres above? Sooner or later, we had our work on the biggest buildings in the city, yeah. which was cool. Well, I didn't sleep when I was doing it, but it's cool, cool now that some of that, that shit's still rolling, you know? If the connection was straight us to art making, it'd be awesome, and we'd be really having a lot of fun and real productive. It's the, the bit in between, that, that's the hard part. It's the resources, the time, the access gear, the walls, the paint, all of that, to be able to do the art. A lot of our work is, is composition and concept based. It's like, what, what are we trying to say? What's the overall message of the wall? The process is an argument, a constructive argument it's a, it's, that... It's a debate. It's a debate, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a good way to put it's it. A, it's, it's a, a concession of challenging each other. Yeah. Like, he'll get to a point of satisfaction, he thinks that's going to work, and I'll go, nah, it should be this. And I'll upset it, and then I'll get to a point, and then he'll... So it kind of, it's kind of like basically trying to better each other or better ourselves consistently until we get to a point where we're like, yeah, that's, mm. that's it. Yeah, a lot of it involves looking and sitting and talking, which is cool. Like we, we spend time, you know, my best friend and get to talk about what we're going to do and how we're going to maximise the space. We spend a lot of time at the wall, looking at it, feeling it, figuring out what will fit on it. And then we probably draw a plan and often that's like either like maybe on your hand or on a receipt or something. And that's it. And then we're like, yeah, that, well, that, that'll mm. work. That's the composition and let's do it. Just, there's a lot of challenges that come into it. To get to painting a wall is hard. Once you're painting it, you're in public space. One of the biggest challenges with what we do is that it's... With the dependent. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta, it's, it's hard. Like you, you can go, all right, it's Friday's gonna be sunny, but then fucking rains. Yeah, we'll get the lift, we've got the paint, we'll meet you there in the morning and get there. It's too windy, too wet. Yeah, all this planning, all this admin, this, 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 pay for that, pay for that, get your paint, rains for a week. And like, you're like, oh, well, you know, it's, it's very hard to control because it's out, it's completely out of your control. There's nothing you do. So I think like, the dude that sits in a gallery with his music on and his latte and his girlfriend giving him a blowjob at lunchtime, it's, it's so easy for him to do that. It's so easy, and I, I'm like, you motherfucker, you got no idea, like, that if it rains, your whole game would be, you know? I want to rip that guy's roof off and sort of see how he paints then, you know? It's 
cool when people want to come and talk to you and often they haven't had the chance and they kind of want to say what up and that, you know, but it's like, it's cool and sometimes we like talking to them, but sometimes you've got to paint. Because we're often, you know, we've got access gear. That's like two months rent sometimes to have that access gear. Yeah. Like we don't want to stand on the ground talking to some guy. We got beat up, I got beat up in Newtown. He was running. He was, I'm out. So I, was, stood, so I stood there until it happened and we both ran. Oh yeah. That's one side of the story. You were the one that went up and tried to make peace with a guy that was obviously a little bit on the edge of psychopathic. Yeah. No, we had a we had a bad run in. We, we, we spent legally a lot. And yeah, we're in the wrong place, wrong time. Four in the morning, Newtown, Wellington. That, that, at that time, that was like, that was a huge piece. Yeah. Hey, that, was, that was pretty massive when we did that. That was sort of the first like roller on roller piece with massive holes we'd ever done. We'd actually gone there during the day eh, with cones and tape and done the fill because it, oh, looked, like right. it looked like it looked like a giant buff. And that was like our first like, yeah, we tricked the system. People thought <laughs> we were allowed to do it, you know? Like, yeah. I think we had like painting things we had on these and on, all eh? legit looking and did that. And then yeah. at night, all we did is did the outline to make it like a piece. Yeah, yeah it's funny, yeah, it's funny. One of the bigger themes in our work has been the dissecting and the chopping up of characters and for a long time we were painting like these real happy cats and characters and it was all like, you know, love and happiness and fun and then, you know, I think the first thing I chopped up was because I was having a real shit month. I was like, some got a bad mark, girlfriend left me, this sort of shit and I was like, fuck it, let's split it. And coming from a science background, you know, I'd spent so much time looking at these science diagrams and dissecting that and you know a lot of zoology illustrations and stuff and I think that was the first time we started bringing that scientific aspect into our work. Like we were doing all that and making it all fit the walls and that and then I think after a while we started realizing that what we we're actually doing was we were doing a case study on our characters and I think that's where a whole lot of projects or we call that series branched out where we did the movement one and then we went fully into the fully dissecting one and then we started doing the bones ones and the and the muscle ones and yeah. fully just actually started Learning researching ourselves I guess you know and trying to learn it mm. and I guess training our, the artwork as a, as a research experiment yeah itself. yeah I think, I think it's a privilege I think we're really lucky I don't own any of the buildings that I've painted and like I've somehow been able to convince those people that it's a good idea that we've got, you know, this giant thing, you know, a Kama Sutra, a dude getting a blowjob and, or a giant cat with an anus or something, you know, we've, we've convinced this person who's invested his whole life saving up to buy this asset and then that it's going to add value that we put that on it. And that's awesome. We don't feel entitled to, I don't feel entitled to doing that. But I, at the moment we leave the wall, it's not ours anymore. It's the public. Yeah. You know, this is not our, like, we'll maintain it if we've got that connection and if we think we should, but it's not ours. It's, it's either the building owners or everybody's, you know. Like, we know when we paint it, we've got no investment in our, like, feelings that it's going to last any longer than the moment we turn around from it and walk away. Like, it might be gone instantly. We can't really do anything about it. Mm. Obviously we hope it's going to last and we want it to so people can enjoy it for longer, but it's that's just how it is. It is a little bit blindly producing something that you hope is valued. You, you don't really, it's not like there's market research to see if, if there's, you know, someone wants a, a, a chopped up cat with an anus on their building. There's no market research about that. It's like, all right, we want, we want to do that. And we think it's going to be cool, but we don't know if anyone else wants that or if anyone cares. And if you do look at the feedback though, your bank account, your, your girlfriend, your family, like there's a lot of things that say don't do this thing. You know, don't yeah. stop right now, get a job, something. But I think, you know, there's also the heart that says, you know, do what you like to do and you sort of try and, as an artist, romanticise that a bit and you want to follow your dreams and your ambitions and all these things, despite these things sort of punching yeah. you in the face and put, put, declining you at the checkout and all those sorts of things. Pretty much most of the time, the whys and all the proof and the evidence is don't do it. 
but something tells you to and and you keep doing it. Yeah, it's kind of like, I don't know if you guys have tried crystal meth, but you know, it feels so good <laughs> and you just know you shouldn't do it, but it feels so good. That's sort of it. We don't do crystal meth. We, we don't do crystal meth. I'm absolutely count my blessings to be able to work with this guy and paint with this guy and, and brainstorm with this guy. Like, I, I think I'd be fucked without him. So it is, I'm, we're really lucky, I think, in that sense that we've got each other to keep things going, and motivate each other and tag in and out. Yes, yeah, motivating. It's very motivating to be in a collaborative, especially when the other person always works harder than you. We've got like this shared skill set, but then there's also like certain things he's excelled at and I will never be able to do. And there's certain skills that I bring to the table. I can look at a wall and, and not know what I've painted because we've, we've painted different parts but it's sort of come out as a, as a unique BMD thing. Andrew can paint a wall in Wellington and it helps BMD. Yeah, anything that we yeah. do that signs off as BMD is like we're both there either physically or intellectually or spiritually or, spiritually, or whatever, yeah, yeah. you know? And that's what's kind of cool where I can be on the other side of the world painting something and, you know, I do and, I, and he was there. You know, and it, that's, I'm proud to write his name and my name and our name. Street art is in public space. It's an incredible vehicle for getting a point across. We realised, I guess, the strength in it and we started taking on a few more direct things like the shark finning wall, you know, where that was very direct with what we were saying. The role of an artist is almost a catalyst. Like he's trying to set up conversations a lot of the time. We dedicate so much to it that all we can hope for is that it is important. It has to be important. It's the only way I can make the world better. And there's so much dryness around that people turn to culture and sports and, and creative things to give life meaning. And I think that's, that's where the importance comes from, where creatives do add value through, through what they do.